Thank you so much, Allison. I appreciate it. I'm very happy to be here today. I'm taking a minute to catch up in the chat. I just love to see where people are from. I know a lot of these organizations across the state here. Um, Disability Network, hi. CHN, I don't know what that one stands for. Someone can let me know that. Okay. A veteran specialist, Mid-Michigan Community Action Agency in Saginaw. Housing Services, Mid-Michigan Community Housing Network, thank you. Um, great, wonderful. Thank you all so much for being here and for introducing yourself. I see we have people from Grand Rapids and Lenawee and Lansing, Detroit, um, Lapeer, look at that. It's so nice to have all of you virtually here together. Like I mentioned, if you heard before, we were chatting a little bit. I'm in East Lansing, Michigan. I am right here at Michigan State University, home of the Spartans. So for all you Spartan fans, hopefully you really enjoyed the basketball game on Saturday. MSU beat Michigan. If you're Michigan fans, I hope you enjoyed all the success of your football team this year. You did really well. So no matter which school we might cheer for here in Michigan, we had some good news lately. I'll tell you a little bit about myself so you can get to know me a little bit and find out more about my background. Oh, and I see someone's here from outside of Michigan. That's amazing. Thank you all so much for popping those in the chat. Um, I'm currently the director of the Michigan State University Work-Life Office here at Michigan State University. Michigan State University has 13,000 employees from 72 industries. So just about all industries are covered. And my job is to help lead the work-life efforts for all of our 13,000 employees across campus. Uh, aside from being director of the Work-Life Office, I am an executive board member uh, for CUFA, which is the College and Uni University Work-Life Family Association. So that's the National Association of Other Work-Life Offices, and it's a really, really great place to share best practices. We focus a lot on um, family-friendly policies, workplace well-being, which this presentation is one of, um, and we do help newcomers acclimate to the area in Michigan State, and we also do a variety of things regarding work-life fit and a positive work culture here at MSU. I went to Michigan State for my bachelor's degree in psychology. I lived in Colorado during my master's degree. I have a master's in community counseling from the University of Northern Colorado. My spouse is an 11-year Air Force veteran, and so we spent the first 11 years of our marriage traveling around the country. And I have a post-master's certificate in school counseling from Eastern Michigan University. I am a licensed professional counselor, a licensed school counselor, and a global career development facilitator. I mentioned my spouse. We've been married 25 years. That's Wayne. He also works at Michigan State University. We have a 16-year-old, Hayden. So you're in those early years, Allison. <laughs> Feel free to reach out when you get into the teen years. And then I'm a dog mom to Princess Leia Luna, who's our four-year-old yellow lab. So our family are Star Wars fans. So Princess Leia was the name that we had to have for our yellow lab. And I'm an engaged community volunteer. I actually came up through working in nonprofits. I worked for a lot of nonprofits in Michigan, Colorado, California, and Montana before we moved back to Michigan, where I also worked for several nonprofits. Um, and so I really appreciate community-based work. And just because I work at MSU now, I, I volunteer both here on campus and still in the community. I have been a Girl Scout leader for 10 years. My scouts are now in 11th and 12th grade. And I've had a lot of them since they were daisies. Uh, we just had a sleepover and a murder mystery dinner on Friday. That was our event for, for this week. So it's something I really love to do. And I also love giving back to local community organizations through providing presentations, volunteering, as well as um, donating when I can. So thank you all for the great work that you do. I think it's amazing. And I wanted to give you just that little context so that when we talk to each other, and go through this presentation, you have a little bit of context about where I am and where I'm coming from. I saw someone put in there that they, they're really here because they want to find out how to get a handle on their stress, right? Um, oh, I see someone's daughter has her gold award. We're getting ready to work on those from Scouts. So I love working with Scouts. It's amazing. I think it's really cool uh, working with young people who are not only deciding what they wanna be when they grow up, but they're deciding who they're going to be. And I like being a part of that. It's a really good, really great thing. 
So we all have stress. We're going to talk about that, how we all have stress, whether it's positive stressors or negative stressors, we all have it. Um, I am currently battling HER2 positive breast cancer. And so the short haircut is my hair growing back after chemotherapy. I'm currently going through radiation. I have had four sessions. I have 20 total. Um, and so there's stress in my life. If you know anybody going through a major health issue, or if you know anyone who's a caregiver for someone with a major health issue, it's really stressful. So it's important for me to stay grounded, to stay engaged in things that are in my normal life, and to remember that I'm not only a cancer patient, I am also a mom, a community volunteer, a spouse, a daughter of aging parents. I, all of those identities really mean a lot to me. A director of the work-life office, I have an amazing and supportive team here. So as we talk about the things going on, I talk about that and I say it out loud because there's a lot of things that we don't say out loud at work, right? We're all carrying around tons and tons of things that we just don't talk about at work. And that's okay. It's important to have boundaries. It's important to have that privacy. But sometimes we have things that it's important for people to know around us what's going on so they can better help support us. And that is one of the ways to define stress. So just today I went for a walk. I'm like, it's cold, but it's sunny. So I'm going to go for a walk up to Beaumont Tower. I walked like, you know, equivalent of maybe one or two blocks, not very far because I forgot socks today for one reason. Um, but just getting outside, I practiced mindful walking and we'll talk about that. It's important for me to stay grounded throughout the day. And it's good for all of us to, if we're physically able to move in any way, to get up and to, to move around, get outside. I heard you talking about the thousand hours of being outside. It's so, so important for all of us to get outside when we can. So we're going to talk about these different grounding strategies. We're going to talk about stress. We're going to talk about how to navigate it. So we're going to define what grounding strategies are. We're going to learn about different grounding strategies. And we're going to understand how stress is connected to our health and our productivity. I love this picture. Sometimes our mind is full, like on the left. I have to pick up so-and-so from practice. I didn't get groceries yet. I need to order shipped. I need to get order a pizza. I need to, oh my gosh, you know, who am I hearing that noise from? Like our mind is full of all these different things. That's the picture of the thought bubble on the left. On the right, you'll see mindful. This is when we can be clear and we can focus in on, our, on the reality and on the here and now. And that's what our goal is. That picture on the right is what we wanna get you to. So let's get started. As Allison mentioned, if you have questions, you can put those in the Q&A anytime you have a question. And Allison, feel free if they come to the Q&A to let me know. Um, also, you can put things in the chat if you would like to. I like people to participate. I like you to be engaged. So please don't hesitate to do that. Let's talk about how we can make the most out of these grounding strategies, right? The first thing to do is practice. So I practice mindful walking every day. Some days it might be just walking around my living room, but I practice it. Some days I'll get those miles in. I recently took a family break between chemo and radiation. We took off to Florida for two weeks. And one day at Disney World, I did six miles, which is huge for me because I haven't been walking much. Um, so some days I walk a lot. My goal to get healthy again is to start with a mile. Just get a mile in each day that I can. But if I can't do that, maybe I can make it up that block to Beaumont, or maybe I can walk around the living room. I'm saying these things just to remind you that wherever you start, it's okay. And you don't always have to keep increasing it. I could stay at a mile for this whole year, and that would be a really good thing for my blood sugar, my heart, my lungs, my mind, right? Because they're all connected. Practice when you don't feel stressed. So if you're not particularly stressed, practice these strategies. That way, when a moment comes up, it comes more naturally to engage in these practices. Start early, don't wait your, till your stress is so high that it's harder to handle. So this is gonna be my first full week of radiation, my first full week back in the office, two days from home though. Um, and so there's lots of things on my mind. They're not bad things, but sometimes when our mind's full, just getting out and taking a walk, doing visualization, focusing on breathing can help bring us back into this present moment. And that is our, our goal. And then stick with a strategy for a while before moving on to another. I had the privilege to host, uh, be a facilitator and a trainer for Homefront Strong. Homefront Strong is an organization that helps military spouses. So as a veteran spouse, I understand being a military spouse comes with its own stresses and pressures. 
And so we did a lot. We did one a week of grounding strategies. And sometimes the spouses in the group would go, oh my gosh, this is never going to work for me. But I said, try it, try it for five days for 15 minutes and just see. Sometimes we don't think something will work, but we can be surprised by it. So stick with one grounding strategy a little bit before moving on to another, and then set a goal. We know when we set a goal and track our progress, we're more likely to do it. I don't know how many of you have Fitbits or smart watches, right? So you, I know that I have a goal um, right now as I'm building back stamina to get at least 5,000 steps a day, hope to get back up to like 8,000 steps a day, but I can track it right on my wrist and on my Fitbit app. It can tell me how I did this week, what days I made my goals, and it's never to punish myself if I didn't make my goal, but rather to watch progress. So if you set a goal and track your progress, that's a really good way to keep yourself on track. If you have a buddy that you're practicing with or you share your results with, you'll even be more successful. These are different strategies. Different strategies work for different people. So it's okay if one of them doesn't seem like a good fit. Um, so we're going to try several different strategies just really briefly to get, give you an overview. And then after this presentation, you'll get to choose one that you're going to start implementing to see if that works for you. Um, every night about 11 o'clock after the rest of us go to bed, my spouse takes Princess Leia on her walk at night and it's our neighborhood is lit and my spouse puts in a podcast and that is his grounding time. It's a time to have time by himself without anyone needing anything from him and going on that walk. So even though it's late at night, he feels like it's calm and it's peaceful. For me, I like walking when I can see people and energy. Sometimes I listen to music. Sometimes I just pay attention to nature outside, right? So even though we both like walking, we have different things that work for us. So just know that something that might work for you might not work for someone else, and that's okay. Um, but give it a try and stick with it. And then I ask yourself to check in. So I want you all to think of one is having absolutely no stress, as carefree as you ever could be. And five being having so much stress that you're, you could burn out and you're potentially not working as well as you would be normally, your body and your mind. So you can pop that into the chat privately or publicly if you want to share. One is no stress and five is the most stress you could imagine. Where would you put yourself on that scale? All right, three, three, four point five, four, three, four, three, five, five, three, three, four, three point five, three point five, four, three. Okay. I see a lot of numbers coming in. 3.8. I love you people that get so specific like that. <laughs> Consistently a three. That's right. Some days are, are more than others. Some times of the day are more than others. A two. Glad to see that. A three, a four, three-ish. Yeah, 2.5, all right, 3.5, okay. All right, it's good to have an idea of where you are. Um, I have no idea what a one feels like. Yeah, I think that's pretty honest. I don't. I haven't had many people on these presentations that I've been giving stress presentations, not this one particular, but asking these questions for over two decades and working with people on stress. And I've not, don't think I've ever seen a one. So I think you're right. We all have stress, whether it's positive or negative. Going on vacation is stressful, even though it's a great thing, right? Everything has stress. Um, okay, thank you for sharing that for me. It's important that we check in with ourselves and we know where we're, we are when we start. And that's important when you do grounding strategies as well. You want to kind of get a feel of how am I feeling? So before my walk, I felt maybe like a three. <coughs> After my walk, I felt more like a two. I knew that that was some progress. It brought my all the, the noise in my mind. It let me quiet it, right? So that's the goal. And I just ask that you enter this workshop with an open mind and give it a try. Um, because why not, right? These are the grounding strategies that we're going to go through. Gratitude, progressive muscle relaxation, visualization, guided imagery, mindfulness, focused breathing, affirmations, mantras, and mottos, and the five, four, three, two, one grounding technique. So these are the ones we're gonna do together and we're gonna practice. But before we get started, I wondered, uh, Allison, were there any questions in the Q&A or does anyone have anything they wanna pop in the chat before we move into these? I'll give you just a minute to think about that. I am not seeing anything, but if I do see something, I will let you know. Thank you so much.
All right. So what I would like you to do as we start thinking about grounding strategies is I want to know how you know that you're stressed. So there are typical signs that we know. Some people get really grouchy. Some people get headaches, um, tight jaws. Some people get gastrointestinal issues. Some people get forgetful, right? Put the cereal on top of the, you know, inside the fridge and put the milk on top of the fridge, right? Those are things. So how do you know that you're stressed? If you feel comfortable, pop it into the chat. Um, I know for me, my stomach gets upset and I also get short, right? Like I trip over something like, what is that shoe doing there? And you know, it's not about the shoe. Clench draw, move or pace, all of them. Yeah, I get that. Um, shoulders start moving fast, hunch shoulders or clenched jaw. Forgetful, very common, all of the above. Upper back and breathing, yes, our back and shoulders we're gonna Jill actually do something on breathing. Hey, your neck hurts, tightness, irritable, low patience, lose your appetite. I sometimes eat too many carbs. That's not a good one, but I do do it. Um, shoulders hunched is so true. Clenched jaw, flare up of chronic health issues. I'm so glad you said that because for those of us that have health issues, for example, if you're a diabetic, stress makes your sugar less predictable. If you have anxiety, stress makes your anxiety more prevalent. If you have depression, stress makes you feel like you can do less. If you have high blood pressure, stress affects it. So anything you might be dealing with, with your health, and um, as part of the University Health and Wellbeing Unit here at MSU, we consider health, mental and physical health, and they're all connected. So anything you are struggling with can, can definitely, stress will make it worse. Feeling overwhelmed, racy heart, yes. Difficulty sleeping, absolutely. So I mentioned earlier that I'm a licensed professional counselor. And so before cancer, I was doing one night a week of private practice. And so I did grounding strategies all the time with clients. And um, after I stopped doing private practice, because I just didn't have the energy, I started noticing some things in myself after my diagnosis. And one being my, when I would get very stressed, my face and my lips would feel like they're pins and needles. I literally got numb due to stress and I, it could come out of nowhere nowhere. Of course, my subconscious was processing a lot. And so interestingly, when I started radiation, I had that happen again, never had that happen in my 49 years before that. So sometimes we'll get new symptoms if something comes up and is more stressful than we've dealt with before. Um, and, and so it's important to know when you're stressed, because if I know that I'm stressed, I can do something about it. So knowing those triggers are really, really important. Um, okay. Now for the fun part, what's your favorite way to relax? What do you like to do currently that makes you feel relaxed? Knitting, sleep, very nice. Hiking, oh, you know, I love that. Reading, working out, music and walking, drawing, very nice. My team draws all the time. Reading, looking at that baby, sitting on the water. Ooh, we'll, we're going to talk about that too. Um, jigsaw puzzles, music. Sleeping, crocheting, watching, wrestling, coloring, getting outside, reading, working out, favorite show. Yeah, sometimes trashy television is just what I need. It's mindful and it's just what I need to like tune out of everything else. I'm um, listening to an audio book. I'm currently listening to Michelle Obama's new book on audio on my walks. Mood lighting, music and Hallmark movies, Zumba class, woodworking, golfing, yoga, walking the dog, podcast, taking a bath. I noticed you said healthy because yes, yeah, sometimes we do have unhealthy ways of coping. We might eat too many carbs. We might drink more than we want. You know, that, that is something that happens with higher stress too. So it's very honest. Watching TV, music and dancing. Oh, what kind of dancing? We like to have kitchen dance parties when we're cooking dinner. Poor painting art. That sounds interesting. Drinking a gin and tonic, right? So knowing when something is healthy and when something is maybe maybe not healthy. That's really important for all of us to take stock of. Thank you all for sharing that. I love hearing some of those things. And woodworking really sounds fascinating to me. Um, I went to the YMCA of the Rockies for a vacation, a family vacation, and they had a wood burning art class. And so I took that while I was there. And it was one of the most fun things I've ever done. Never did it before. It didn't turn out great, 
but I still have it up to remember the experience. So there's things that put us into a space where we can't think about anything else, right? Speaking of that, we all like to multitask when we're on webinars, and I ask that you do what you have to do because I know you have responsibilities, but to stay as present as you can, you'll get more out of the presentation. And with that, I'm turning my phone over right now so I can't even see things that pop up for notifications. All right, thank you all so much for sharing that. And I really like um, reading all of those things. It sounds like you're engaged in some really interesting and important hobbies and things to do when you're stressed. So let's go into gratitude. People have a mixed feelings about gratitude. When I talk about gratitude, I like to be careful to say I am not talking about toxic positivity. Everything doesn't always have to be positive. It's not real life, right? Um, but it is, it will, what you look for is what you'll see more of. So going through this journey I'm going for, if I wake up in the morning and I just lay in bed and say, what am I grateful for today? What three things? Even when I'm feeling really bad, I can be honest and say, gosh, my body really hurts today. That's okay. And then I can change my focus and say, what am I grateful for? I'm grateful that I woke up. I'm grateful for good health insurance. And I'm grateful for Princess Leia who hops in bed with me every morning when I'm eating my eggs and toast, hoping to get a nibble, right? So when you talk about the things you're grateful for, if you start your day that way, it will start you on a positive mental attitude. Um, real life happens, so we need to feel all the feelings. But what we try to keep our focus on is what we're going to see the most. So grounding, it'll keep us in the here and now. It, it reminds me every day in the little things I'm grateful for. Someone held the door open for me when I had my hands full today. I was just so grateful for that kind of kindness. Um, grounding skills can be very helpful in managing stress, overwhelming feelings, emotions, or anxiety. They're tools to help someone regain, regain their mental focus, right? So when we're stressed, things are kind of everywhere, and sometimes we get either overwhelmed with too many thoughts or we go blank, right? Or somewhere in between. Grounding strategies and gratitude are tools to manage stress and build resiliency. They're short, like taking deep breaths or they're longer, more formal exercises like meditation. So grounding strategies, no matter which one we're talking about on that list, all are doing the same thing. They're helping to reorient us to the here and now and to be present. And that is the goal. It'll help us manage stress and be resilient. So looking out at this group of lovely people, I know that you've all gone through something in your life that you had to navigate. And so sometimes people say to me, I don't have any stress management techniques. It's sometimes good to think about what you've done before. What helped you when you had a bad breakup? Maybe you got fired from a job. Maybe your car ran out of gas on a busy highway. Um, maybe you had unfortunately a loss in your life. Grief is something that none of us escape from forever. Um, things happen in our life. So what did you do? What did you do before to help get you through it? I know for me, I, I turned to supportive people that I really knew had my back. That is one thing that I did. Being able to rely on other people to be there for me, like I try to be there for people. I see other people saying, I took a hot bubble bath. I vented to a friend. I allowed myself to grieve. What a beautiful gift to give yourself. Prayer and supportive friends being held by my husband, journaling and prayer, supportive family and friends, therapy, hallelujah. We got four covering our family right now. <laughs> Watch a movie that'll make cry and let me go. Yes. Get rid of all the gifts that were given to me by the former lover. Definitely helped. Venting to friends that understand what you're dealing with. Absolutely. I have two breast friends. That's what we call each other. And even our most supportive, loving family members don't know what it's like to go through breast cancer. So we have an ongoing daily chat where we just share a symptom, talk about something, talk about a thought. It's really important to have those people who understand what you're dealing with, whatever that is, Corey. Journaling, playing with dogs. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, my teen allows me to share this, but they were in a pretty deep depression before my diagnosis and then unfortunately got worse with my diagnosis. And our dog, Princess Leia, I believe, saved their life. Um, they didn't want anything to do with us at times, but that dog, when the dog came around, it was happiness, hugs, cuddles, love, unconditional, right? So animals can definitely be a very powerful way that we can heal and ground ourselves. 
talking things out and breathing, thinking of others in the world who have it worse. You know, it's really interesting. I think that's it's important for us to keep things in perspective, absolutely. But I don't want to minimize what people go through. Sometimes they have a bad performance review and that might rock them for a couple of days or a week. That's okay. Yes, there'll be always people that have it worse. And it's important to keep that perspective so that we stay in a place of gratitude and that we can see the good things that we have. I can't tell you going through this cancer is the number one thing to bankrupt families. And I can't tell you how grateful I am that I had a savings account, that I have good health insurance, and then I have a supportive family, and then I have a job that was flexible, right? Definitely thinking of all the people, even in my community, who don't have the same resources. So thank you all for sharing that. That's that's really, really nice to think of how we have handled things before. So you all have tools. You are resilient. You've done this before. So we're going to hopefully add some tools to your tool belt our toolbox, and we're also going to try some new things to see if it helps you. And we talked about illness related to stress, so I always like to say the did you know that stress is responsible for 80% of illnesses, 70 to 90% of doctor's visits. We talked about that positive stress that can motivate you, and stress is normal. 100% of people in the world have stress. In 20 years, I've never seen anyone put a one as their stress level. So um, it's important that we acknowledge, yes, I have stress. That's normal. Let's jump right into gratitude and talk about that. What is gratitude? Gratitude is more than saying thank you. You heard me say that when I wake up in the morning, before I even get out of bed, I think of three things that I'm grateful for. And I've been doing this practice for a long, long time, for years. And it does really help me start my day, even if I'm not feeling well, even if I have a rough day to put myself into the perspective of the things that I'm grateful for. Just like we all have stress, hopefully we all have things that we can be thankful for as well. So it's purposely focusing your attention on the good moments of the day. So I took a great class, it's free, on a thing if you Google Coursera, um, the class that course on happiness, I took it through Yale and it's a free class on happiness and it's research-based, all of that. And one of the things I learned is that practicing gratitude can increase your happiness by 25%. So just by being grateful and practicing that gratitude. Now, if I'm grateful for someone else, like my spouse, who's been the best caregiver I could ever ask for, has been to every medical appointment with me, has been there by my side, solid and sturdy, I can be grateful for him. But if I tell him, then that increases the gratitude. It increases the gratitude, uh, doesn't only help me, but also helps him get the gratitude. So write a thank you note or an email, send a card to someone thanking them for something. Make sure at a staff meeting that you appreciate a colleague or a supervisor um, for something that they did. You can do that anytime and it will just help change the mood and others will start looking for more gratitude as well. So for some people, it's natural. It's natural for me to share gratitude. It's in my personality. I believe love is what will save the world and we love each other. And so I like to express love in lots of different ways. And I mean, love to strangers, love to my neighbor, sending love to all of you doing this hard work. Um, so think about three things or two, if that's all you can come up with today that you're gr grateful for and reflect on those. And if you want to share one in the chat, I would love that. I mentioned today I had my hands full coming into the office and someone held the door open and it was just with a sweet smile. Oh, here, I'll get that for you. That made me very grateful because that person saw me and it was really nice. I see someone asked for the link on the science of happiness and there's a link in here. Thank you, Amy. There's a link in here that will link you to Coursera. Again, it's free. It's self-paced class, but it, it had so many great exercises and information in it. Um, if you're interested in well-being and, and what causes us to be happy, there's research on it. All right, so if you have one thing today, what are you grateful for? Pop it in the chat if you feel comfortable. Oh, there's one. Great coworkers. Wonderful. That's Isn't that so important? We spent more time with our work family than our family family a lot of times. Life. There was one above that where someone said that they were grateful for um, a client telling mm -hmm. them 
who voiced their disappointment about their services. It really made me reflect on how services could improve and I, how I could improve as an employee. Oh, yes. Grateful for that feedback that lets us be better and gives us insight. That's beautiful. Thank you, Allison. Um, I see several here. Life. Yes. Hallelujah. I can, I can get behind that. Great coworkers. I have the best team ever here. I, I'm not kidding. I'd put this team up against any team. We, we really support each other. The sun. Sunshine. Yes, yes, yes. Life. Sunshine. That all the bills are paid this month. Gosh, isn't that a big one? Family and friends. Great coworkers. Yeah. Learn supportive tools. Excellent. I love that. Your boyfriend got a job. That's amazing. That is something to be very grateful for. Having the opportunity to take this course in your workday. Yes. Life, family, health, work environment. Beautiful. I love all of those. Family and pets. Yes. I think, uh, like I said, Leia is team MVP, our dog, Princess Leia. In the last three years, since we all were locked down together for about two years during COVID, and then we had to stay locked down again to make sure I didn't get any of the germies going around. So about three years, that dog has seen us every day, and she's MVP. Yeah. I remembered to bring lunch, and I had time to eat it. That's fantastic. Those are the kind of things I'm talking about. Like, what can we look at in our day that we're grateful for? So sometimes people do this in the morning in bed. Or at the dinner table, we will do rose and thorn. Like, what was the best part of your day? What is something you wish went better? And then some people keep a gratitude journal. You might know that Oprah made it really famous. Uh, she's attributed her success to gratitude. So in an article by Forbes, she talked about she started getting all these opportunities and success once she started to become grateful. And since then, she started the movement of gratitude journals across the country decades ago. So I always think it's interesting to think about who out there in the public eye also uses these tools. And you'll see some examples throughout this presentation. All right, does anyone have questions on gratitude before I, oh, you have a gratitude box to open on New Year's Eve. I love that. So you keep it all year. That's amazing. And gratitude journal. Any questions on gratitude? So we know when we say things to ourselves, we remember it this much. When we say it out loud to someone else, we remember it this much. When we write it down, we remember it this much and can reflect on it. When we share it with others, we remember it this much, right? So gratitude can be exponentially improved and increased the more you're able to share with others. All right, progressive muscle relaxation. This is one I do a lot with clients. A lot of times we don't know where we hold our tension when we're stressed until we do a progressive muscle relaxation. So this is what we do. We're going to, and, and a lot of these, I'm sure many of you have been exposed to and done before. So I love that someone loves this one. Yeah, I like it too. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit comfortable in our chair, close your eyes if you wish, cameras off if you wish, whatever makes you comfortable. And then I'm going to ask you to apply tension to specific muscle groups and then pay attention to how your body feels when you stop applying that tension. So because my hands show up um, in the screen easily, I can say scrunch up your hands, make a big tight fist, and we're gonna count one, two, three, and then we're gonna release it. And then feel how that feels. Think about, process how that feels when you release it, okay? So I think I like to always start with the toes. So once you're comfortable, we're gonna go ahead and start, and we're gonna start with our toes and work up. So if you're sitting, push your feet down into the floor, push those toes and feet down into the floor hard. And I'm gonna to count to one, two, three, and then release. Oh, it's always a good feeling after the release. Now I want you to focus on your calves all the way up to your knee. So you can put your legs out straight in front of you and flex your feet and that'll tense those up. One, two, three, and then relax. Of course, anything I ask you to do, please do as you're able and as you're comfortable and you're physically able. Now we're gonna tighten up our glutes and our thighs. And we're just gonna squeeze our glute together and ready, go ahead and squeeze all that area. One, two, three, and release. That brings us to our abdomen and our chest. And we're just gonna cross our arms across our body like this and tense all of that up as I count to three. So go ahead and tense that up. One, two, three, and release. 
And let's go on to our, our hands and our arms. We're gonna stretch our arms out in front of us and make fists. Go ahead and tense those muscles. One, two, three, and then release. Now we have our face and you'll get to see my squishy face <laughs> and then I'll count. So go ahead and squish your face all together. And I'm gonna count one, two, three, and release. Did you notice anything about your body? Yeah. I noticed that I'm, I'm leaning forward a little to my screen. So I think my screen's a little too far away and that's causing my back and my shoulders to feel tight. So by going through progressive muscle relaxation, you can do this on your own. You can do it with or without a script and you don't need a lot of time. And it can just help you stay grounded as you're, as you're paying attention to try to focus those small muscle groups or even large like we did your whole leg. That's what you're gonna focus on and it'll keep you in the here and now because you're focusing on that and you can't really think about what you're gonna make for dinner, right? So with practice, you can lower your stress. I do see a question in the chat I'd love to answer. How do you practice it on days when you feel like things are not going your, your way? Well, Natalie, that's really interesting. I don't know if those any of you watched the Today Show, but um, I did the Start Today Walking Challenge is how I started walking again after um, chemo when I didn't have any energy. And a lot of people ask these very questions. How do you do it when you're just feeling like nothing's going your way? The good thing is, is something like this, a progressive muscle relaxation, your mood can be paused because you're going to focus on just tensing your feet or your legs. Sometimes when I'm having a rotten day, it's even a better way to say, I'm just going to go walk outside around the block. When we were working from home all the time, we were home and home was work, right? And so I'd close my laptop, put it in my office, take a walk around my house and come back in the door just to help me mentally say I'm done working and now I'm at home, right? So I would just say to try to motivate yourself, pick something you like to do. So maybe it is journaling and maybe you can give yourself two minutes to talk about, to journal down all the rotten things that happen and then give yourself three minutes to talk about anything you can think of that you're grateful for. So it is just practice. And like I said, if you practice when you're not stressed, it helps you to do the things when you are stressed. So um, progressive muscle relaxation is one that I use. You can do this in your bed. You can do this laying down. You can do this standing up or sitting. Um, so it's one that you can do just about anywhere. And I see we have at least one progressive muscle relaxation fan out there. All right, visualization is another favorite of mine because again, it can be done easily on your own with or without a script. You don't need other people. You don't need many things. You use your imagination. So I want you all to think about where is your happy place? Start thinking about that as I go through this. Simply imagine a place that brings peace or comfort. And then we're gonna go through each of the sentence to be, senses to be in that place. We're gonna get comfortable again and we're gonna practice. So this is um, in my office right now. I mean, I can point to the wall, it's right over there. And this is my get away from it all wall. So I saw somebody, I told you we'd come back to this talking about being by the water. The water is definitely my peaceful place. Um, I belong to a local health club and I do water aerobics in the water, swimming in the water. I also, any vacation I have, if I have a chance to be near a lake, a river, or stream, I do the ocean. Um, we just got back from Florida and one week we were in Cocoa Beach where we could just walk to the beach and see the water. The surfers, the pelicans, the waves, right? Water can be really relaxing. So. If I'm having a particularly stressful day, or if I'm sitting here in winter Michigan where it's dark all day, dark when I leave the house, dark when I get home, I can turn my body towards my get away from it all wall. And this is what I'll see. Um, that middle picture of my 20th anniversary, we went to Maine, that's where the lighthouse is from. The one on the right, that's Salsalita, California. The one circled in the yellow circle, my teen when they weren't yet a teen, but that's my very favorite place on earth. It's Empire, Michigan, uh, Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. And there is a beach there that we go to that has little fire pits and benches and a beach. And it's a beautiful place to sit and to be peaceful and be with nature. So if I'm having a particularly bad time, I will go 
look at my get away from it all wall, pick one of these places I love, and I'm going to imagine myself there. So, oh, I see someone, another Empire fan. Yes, if you've never been there, it's just beautiful. Uh, where is your happy place? Pop it in the chat. It can be, some people say, at my, my mother's dinner table, in my living room by my fireplace, in my comfy bed, like where it could be, at the ocean, big or small, where is your happy place? The beach, my car, Mackinac, love that. My bed, Frankenmuth. Winter, winter, chicken dinner, Frankenmuth. Home library, family cabin, Lake Michigan. Yes, we're so lucky with the water around us here. The beach, up north. In my hammock at the park. Ah, oh, nice. I'll tell you, students around here have it right. I'll walk to some of the beautiful places on MSU's campus and they'll have their hammocks up studying. <laughs> A little cottage on Silver Lake. Anywhere with sun looking at the lake, waterfront, my mom's house where I grew up. My mom had me over for dinner last night and made my childhood favorite chicken in the walk for dinner. And that's absolutely peaceful to be back in those smells. With my two-year-old granddaughter, yes, children bring us joy. I had a really rough day Friday and then I had my seven of my 10 Girl Scouts over for murder mystery dinner and a sleepover. And my mood totally changed um, because they're so joyful. Anywhere for sun and water, traveling, lakes with my son. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. So I hope everyone has in their mind now where their happy place or peaceful place is. So think of that place. Think of your peaceful place. I'm going to picture Empire, Michigan. We have a house rented up there for a week in July already. I'll, I'll but I think to that place. So go ahead and close your eyes and sit comfortably. What do you see in your happy place? Think about the colors you see and the shapes. What is it near? What is far when you look out? Picture that happy place, think of these things. Take a deep breath in. What do you smell in your peaceful place? Is it salt water, your mom's chicken, flowers, a scented candle? What do you smell in your peaceful place? Turn your attention to your mouth. What do you taste? What sounds do you hear around you? Is it quiet? Is there lively music playing? Are there people talking? Do you hear the water crashing on the shore? Do you hear the bells of Beaumont Tower? What do you hear? What do you feel? Turn your attention to your feet. Do you feel dirt, carpet, cold, warm sand? What do you feel? This is your peaceful place. Look at it all together, feel it all. Feel what you see, what you smell, what you hear, what you feel. This is your peaceful place. And then bring yourself back into the room slowly. Slowly step away from your peaceful place. You're here now with me and all of us in this webinar, but your peaceful place is still there. You can go and visit it anytime. So we did this group practice, this visualization in about two minutes, right? The Science of Happiness um, through Yale, through Coursera, a free course, no fee. One of the things they talked about is the data that when I am up north in Empire, there's so many things that make it so great. Water, I have my family, I have free time. It's all the things I love. Um, and I will decrease my stress when I'm there and I will feel so much more stress-free. But through visualizing it, if I can do a visualization and spend seven visualized, so pretend out minutes there, seven minutes, you can get half of what you could get if you were really there. Can you believe that? So I tell people when they're in a stressful state, what is your happy place? Do you have a picture of it like I do near you? Do you have a picture of your happy place? If not, maybe get one, tuck it in your wallet, put it inside a book. 
display it like I do if, it, if that's comfortable. And when you're having those bad moments, you can look at that picture and it will really help transport you there. I worked with a um, client right before I stopped doing private practice for the time being. And one of the things that they had a lot of depression during the seasonal depression, a lot of us do in Michigan. And so they were going to Mexico in February and they put the picture of where they're going in Mexico on their desk. And they said every day, at least three times a day, they would look at it and picture what it was gonna be like in Mexico. And they said it greatly helped their mood and their depression. So there's a lot of data here that shows that this really works. So take those pictures, upload it as a screensaver. I love that idea. Um, exactly, put it as your phone lock screen. So every time you go to get on your phone uh, to play Wordle in the morning, there it will be that, that, that peaceful place or something that represents it. So I could take a picture of my mom's fireplace, right? And that to me will trigger those memories. So practice visualization, uh, it's really lovely. And, and like I said, I have a whole wall in my office dedicated to it. And I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one counseling using it. And I've seen people have really great results. So if that's not one you practiced before, give it a try. A lot of times we need to change our environment, but we can't. Maybe we need to get go somewhere sunny, but we can't afford it, or we don't have vacation time, and it's the middle of winter. How can we change our environment without changing our environment? We can look at pictures. We can put on tropical music. We could light a candle that smells like whatever flower blooms in your place, right? We can help to change our environment when we can't quite get where we need to go, and it will help increase our mood and help us to feel grounded because we're engaging every single one of our senses, and that's what we're focusing on instead of Am I going to be too tired to make it to five o'clock today at work? Am I, you know, whatever it is that's on your mind. Any questions come up for these first few? Not questions, but a lot of yes, uploaded as my screensaver, and then more where their spots are. That's excellent. That's great. And I think, you know, what you all are doing today by attending to your stress is really self care. You deserve it. The work that you do is not easy work and you are worth being well. And I know Maya Angelou, you might hear me quote her a lot if you hear me speak because I, I just feel like she has so much wisdom, um, had so much wisdom, but her quote, she says, if you don't work, nothing else will. So if I don't take care of myself and my health, I can't be here for my family, for my colleagues, for my coworkers. We have to take care of ourselves first all the time. And that will help us be able to do the other things we want to do. So my Angelou, if you don't work, nothing else will. So how can we help get that stress level down? What types of tools and techniques will really help us? So I like to show famous people that have um, decided that these things work. So Bill Gates said he thought meditation or visual, you know, visualization was a woo-woo practice. He just didn't buy it. And now he says he's gained a much better understanding at least two or three times a week for about 10 minutes, he meditates. And he now sees meditation as a simple exercise for your mind, the way walking or exercises or playing sports is for our bodies. It's like taking a few minutes out of his day, learning how to pay attention to the thoughts in his head and gain a little bit of distance from them. So that's another successful person who thought, okay, fine, I'll try this. And then really got some really good, some really good results from it. All right, this is the guided imagery. So we practiced this before, <laughs> or sorry, not, oh yeah, guide, guided meditation, sorry, guided meditation. Uh, so there's a two minute guided meditation I'm gonna play and we practiced it. Um, you can go to Headspace. Yes, someone put that on there. So Headspace is a great app. A lot of the things you can do for free and you can do beginner meditations there. So you can upload things to your phone on an app for free or for a charge. You can also find things on YouTube. Um, but guided imagery is deliberately, directly daydreaming. It's a form of meditation. It can be as simple as an athlete's five second pause. If you've ever watched the Olympics, you'll see the divers stand at the, stand at the end of the board, close their eyes, and you'll see their head moving around. They are visualizing every single thing that they're gonna do to successfully complete that, that dive. Or you see, if you watched MSU's basketball game, you'll see them whoop, make a fake basket first and then grab the ball and make a basket, right? They're visualizing that ball go into the basket. Um, it can also be complex, like imagining the sights, sounds, and smells of nature through a scripted description. There's one I used to use a lot called um, 
The Forest Awakens. You can Google it, it's free on YouTube. And The Forest Awakens would show you a, a trickling screen in the stream and the wilderness starting to wake up after the forest has been dormant for winter, right? So it can be beginner, it can be short. You can find a script online that you like or you can do something really simple. So what I'm gonna do, I'll turn my camera off so I don't distract you because it is not my accent that you'll hear coming out of the computer. I'm just gonna put a two minute guided meditation here for you. And that's verbal. They can be more complex, but we'll listen to this one. So get comfortable. I'll see you in two minutes. Allow yourself to be still for a moment and start breathing deeply in through the nose and out through the mouth. Don't worry about how loud your breathing is or if anyone can hear it. And there's no need to try and ignore any noise or distractions going on around you or to try too hard to clear your mind. Imagine yourself as a rock in the middle of a stream. All the noise and commotion that may or may not be going on around you just washes over you without having any effect. Focus on your breath. Think about how anything that has negatively affected your day up until this point, and with each outbreath, you are simply going to imagine any unnecessary stress these events are causing you to feel. Just ease away. Breathe in and observe how you feel. Breathe out and feel it easing from your mind. Now, still breathing deeply, take a moment to visualize how you want the rest of the day to go. Imagine achieving any goals and successes at the end of the day and how that will make you feel. Create a mental picture of what that looks like and take a moment to play that out in your mind. Whenever you're ready, bring the exercise to a close and open your eyes. All right. So as you can see, that was a very simple guided meditation where they were just walking you through a two minute recentering. Um, so what I like about these things is that we can do complex, longer guided imagery, um, there was a time I took a class and we used to lay on the floor and they play these really ornate stories, a walk through the woods or something like that. And then you can do very quick ones like this. You can Google on YouTube and, and find some that you like that are absolutely free. I like that. Um, or you can use apps like Headspace. And someone here suggests the mobile app Headspace for beginner meditation that can help you. I used to have a clinical supervisor who had on their phone, um, it would come up and say, breathe. And there would be a little visual that was a circle that expanded and contracted. And it would just remind her to really pay attention to her breathing. So what do you think? What do you think so far? Which one is your favorite so far? We've had guided imagery. We have had um, visualization. We have had progressive muscle relaxation and gratitude. Gratitude, PMR, visualization, and guided imagery. Which one's your favorite so far? Progressive muscle relaxation is our first vote. Gratitude and PMR. Okay. Gratitude, visualization, PMR, visualization, the muscle relaxation. Yeah. Good. And, and because there are a lot of options, you'll be able to figure out what one you think you want to start practicing, um, and which one will work best for you. So we're coming up on our one hour point, and we have a little bit more to get through, but I like to move every hour. It's really important. So for those of you who can, join me and put your arms up over your head. So they say standing two minutes is the equivalent 
of ensuring that you're negating the negative aspects of sitting all day, right? So we can also put our hands up over our head, changes our blood flow. If you are able, you can stand up and, you know, just move your feet side to side, swing your arms a little bit. Even doing that kind of a slow movement will help wake your body up and get your organs moving again. And again, if you can stay in two minutes an hour, it'll greatly help you negate the negative health effects of sitting too much. Ah, thank you for sharing in the chat. I'm catching up here. Thank you so much for attending. All right, I talked about mindfulness a little bit earlier, and that's a practice of being linked to greater resilience and improved physical health. You can do mindfulness listening to music. You can do it walking. You can do it with your senses. So if we were in person, I'd hand a Hershey's kiss out to everybody and say, how does it look? Close your eyes. How does it feel? Open it. Pay attention to the sound. Smell it. What does it smell like? Taste it if you can. What is your taste? What do you taste, right? So you can do mindfulness when you're eating. Mindful eating is really great. It helps slow down your digestion and allows you to really savor your food. Mindful walking is what I do every day. It's like, how is the rhythm of my walking motion on my feet? How do my arms swing? How do I hold my shoulders? You can do it with any exercise. I know some of you mentioned yoga and other things like that. And then listening to music. So I'm going to put on a song and show you how you can listen to music mindfully. So one of the things that I did um, a couple of years is I had I was in a women's chorus. So when you are singing or playing music, for those of you who play guitar or piano or sing, I had to pay attention to the other voices. I had to pay attention to the lyrics. I had to pay attention to all of these other things. I could never think about what am I going to do for dinner? How come the house is a mess? It really allowed me. And when I would leave my practice from singing, I would be incredibly relaxed. So I'm gonna play a song for you. Can you hear it? All right. What instruments do you hear? Drums, yeah. Tells us to clap along to do it. I remember some of you like to dance, so go ahead and bop around with music. I hear background singers too, Pat. What do you hear? Percussion, yes. Piano, I hear it. How about the lyrics? What is this song about? Yeah, happy. You got it. How can you not be happy listening to this, right? All right. I know we could do that all day. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, we know, sorry, we know that music changes our mood. Music can help us feel. One of you mentioned, um, you know, really throwing yourself into music earlier and, or watching, a, someone said watching a sad movie so I can cry and get it all out. Uh, my grandfather was a really, really important person to me. And he was a survivor of a, being a prisoner of war during World War II. Um, and he meant so much to me. And when he passed away, luckily, he had a long life till 92. Um, and so he, I was very pleased that he got to live that long life, especially after being a prisoner of war at 18 years old, right? Um, so he said to me, the best thing you can do in the world is to spread vitamin L, right? Spread, spread vitamin L, which is love. So you heard me talking about love, definitely inspired by my grandfather. I thought if a man who was captured by quote unquote, the enemy and also saved by quote unquote, the enemy 
um, can be grateful and focus on spreading love, I certainly can do that. So, um, but when he died, I was in shock. So grief sometimes hits us a, a myriad of ways. And it was weeks later and I was at a music performance at here at Michigan State, we have the Wharton Center for Performing Arts. It was an acapella group and they sang a song that touched me so deeply, I cried for the entire second half. <laughs> Luckily, I was crying quietly and my spouse put their arm around me, but that music tapped into what I couldn't tap into on my own. So music can help me ground. It can help us stay happy. Every time I play Pharrell's happy, I can't help but to like clap and bop my head around, right? So we can use music to be mindful. What are they saying? What do you hear? What is the beat? Um, challenge yourself. Try to clap on the offbeat. It's hard. It will allow your senses to kick in and take over. And it will allow you to be in that moment with the music. So for those of you that play guitar, play piano, or sing, um, it's a really good way. It's a really good way to be mindful. So you can be mindful doing anything. You can wash a dish and pay attention to what the plate feels like in your hand. What do the bubbles smell like? What is the texture of the plate? What noise does it make when it's set in the sink, right? You can turn those senses into anything you're doing. So mindful chores, mindful grooming, mindful conversations, being fully present and fully aware is a way to be mindful. It's very powerful. I love to do it when I'm walking. I can get double duty in if I am listening to music in my headphones and walking, right? So mindfulness. I hear here learning the difference, learning the difference between the instruments. Yeah, has really helped use music for grounding. Yeah, what what are you picking up? You really have to focus in. Thank you for sharing that. Michael Jordan, all right. It's a shock that we don't have a dog named Michael Jordan. We are a huge Michael Jordan fan, my spouse. We went to the um, Hall of Fame ceremony when he got inducted. That's the kind of fans we were. So uh, I use this example. Michael Jordan left the Chicago Bulls, then he came back and he needed motivation to push his career forward. To restore it, his coach worked with him using meditation and mindfulness. He said, this really works. As soon as you get into that meditative state, you start to see things slowly. And he was able to see the court really well and then read what the defense was trying to do. So mindfulness, there's an article called Mindfulness, the Secret Weapon of Michael Jordan and the late Kobe Bryant in more sports. But you can see we've seen Oprah, we've seen Bill Gates, we've seen Michael Jordan. All of them have talked about how they've got more success by using some of these strategies. So not that you wouldn't believe me, but it's nice to hear from others that have been successful. And we just have a few more here to go through. This one I love, focus breathing. But before I go into it, I wanna see if anybody has any questions so far. All right, I think I'm gonna play that whole happy song after we're done, I wanna hear the rest of it now. All right, focus breathing. We breathe every day, right? You're breathing right now. So if you find a comfortable spot and relax your body, we're gonna ask you to breathe deeply into your belly, expanding your diaphragm, and we're gonna count. So we're just gonna do one, two, three. Uh, I like what they call box breathing. So you breathe in, one, two, three, you hold it, one, two, three. You breathe out for the count of one, two, three, and then you hold it, one, two, three. So let's do that. So let's take a big breath in. Hold it, let it out, and then hold it, exhale. It's hard to do and count at the same time, so I'm gonna not do it with you this time. So take a deep breath in, one, two, three, expand your diaphragm, hold it, one, two, three. Let that breath out slowly, one, two, three. When the breath is out, go ahead and hold that. One, two, three. That's it. Have you ever been around a little kid who gets really upset and you're like, Jose, Jose broke my crayon. And they just can't catch their breath and they have this really labored breathing. Well, we still do that as an adult, but we learn how to not have the labored breathing. So we breathe shallow when we're in a really stressful time. So by focusing on our breathing and our breathing alone and really focusing on breathing in, holding it, breathing out, holding it, expanding that. I usually do five, but I don't like to do five with new folks because it can feel like a long time or 10. You can expand it. 
It allows you to be in the here and now with your own breath. It allows you to take deeper breaths that give you more oxygen, that allow your body and your blood to move around so that we don't get in that stressful state where we're not fully breathing. And it can be used for all ages. So as a therapist in private practice or as someone who used to work in a lot of nonprofits with kiddos, we would practice like blow out the blue, blow out the balloon, right? You can give a visual, like pretend you're blowing up a balloon, you know, um, and teaching people how to do deep breathing, doing focused breathing and deep breaths. So again, any age, any time you can do this, you can do it slowly and quietly in that meeting when you feel your pulse racing, right? Um, your kids late again, didn't empty the trash, left macaroni and cheese particles all in the kitchen. Take a couple deep breaths and ground yourself before we react and that will help us. So many of you mentioned that you can overreact or get really um, irritable easily uh, if you're stressed. So taking these breaths can help us calm down. And when we breathe deeper and slower, we slow down the physiology of our body, which we really need when we're stressed. So focus breathing, simple. All right, I'm going to give you a quiz. So get ready to chat in that chat box. Corporations and leaders and companies have affirmations, mantras, and mottos. So whose motto is this? Just do it. Yes, Nike. Oh, they came in quick. Yes. Okay. Because you're worth it. Anyone know that one? L'Oreal. Yes, you got it. Okay. Impossible is nothing. It does tell our age in some of these there. Impossible is nothing. Does anyone remember that one? Now I can't find my cheat sheet. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Impossible is nothing. Oh, it's Adidas. All right. Yep, Adidas, you got it. Uh, think. Do you know whose motto was think? That's IBM. Yeah, IBM, good job. Okay, how about quality is job one? Ford, yep, absolutely. We got another one about think. Think different. Think different. Probably many of you have these in your hand by this company. Anyone know who think different is? Apple, absolutely, yep. Uh, this is just advancing knowledge, transforming lives. That's Michigan State University. Have to use that one. If I said go green, what would you say? Yeah, Spartans will go white. You got it. Exactly. So <laughs> go blue. I knew that was coming. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew that was coming. I was like, who's going to start with the go blue? Okay. Yes, but but you know right away, if I say go blue, you know who I'm talking about. If I say go green, Spartans will, hashtag Spartans will, absolutely. So it's a way to identify something quickly through an affirmation, mantra, or motto. Um, okay, how about the quicker pick, the quicker picker upper? Anybody remember that one? Bounty, absolutely. Uh, yep, you got that one quick. How about the happiest place on earth? Whose motto is that? Yep, I was just there, Disney was also the longest lines on earth, right? Uh, okay, and then there's quotes or there's mantras. So I want you to think, do you have an affirmation? Like, I've got this, I can do this, I'm strong enough, I'm worthy. Those are affirmations. Do you have any of those? Or do you have a mantra or a motto? So this person said, it takes you 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. That was Warren Buffett. So we use these all the time in advertising and everything else. Um, I see someone put in here that their affirmation is trust myself. Yes, I've been through hard things before. I can do this. Trust yourself. Absolutely. In my family, we say Team Hutch. So Hutchison is our last name. And my spouse and my daughter and I are Team Hutch. And that just means we have each other's back no matter what. We can do this together. We can get through anything together. So if we say Team Hutch, we all know what that means. So some people will find affirmations. I have an entire um, presentation on affirmations. They're incredibly powerful. They are tied to research. I've seen success in my clients in the past um, that have started using affirmations. I have a really good friend, my military brother, Nick, who went through cancer. And when I visited him afterwards, I noticed I would open a cupboard and it would say, you got this. Or I'd go over to the fridge and it'd say, 
try an apple. Uh, he had these affirmations and these tips all postered around his house and it helped him stay in a positive mindset. So that's what affirmations can do. I'm curious, I see trust myself. Does anybody else have an affirmation that they use regularly? I can do this, I'm good enough, I matter, anything like that. So affirmations might be a good place for you to start. We can do hard things. Yes, Glennon Doyle. Yes, absolutely. We can do hard things. I can do hard things. Um, no one expects you to be perfect. Why do you? Yes, my challenges are actually opportunities. I love that. Everything is temporary. That's right, for stress. Great. So those things can help us. So building in mantras, building in affirmations can be really helpful. They're just positive statements you can use when you feel upset or trapped in that negative thought cycle. Like I said, I have a whole presentation on affirmations and I've done a lot of reading on the research and use this really often. Um, we talked about with gratitude, what we look for is what we see. And that can be the same with us. The words we say to ourselves matter. So if we're saying, oh God, you suck. Oh, you blew it again. Whose voice is that coming from? Where did we get that from? We need to change those into affirmations. You did your best. You're going to go out there and you're going to do your best. So positive statements, beliefs, ideals, and values. The story we tell ourselves matters. Replace worry thoughts with affirmations. You can start to change the way you feel. We know through cognitive behavioral therapy and other types of therapy that what we think informs how we react, right? And so if we're thinking, I'm a loser, I'm a loser, I'm a loser, now I'm going to feel depressed, you know, and then I'm going to act sad. I'm going to act crunchy. If I say, I gave it my best shot, I gave it my best shot, then I'm going to feel like I tried, like I really put effort in. And then how am I going to behave to other people? Hopeful. So by replacing, I know that was a one hour presentation put into 30 seconds, but our thoughts are very important. So feed your brain positive thoughts. Different mantras might work for different situations. I saw someone said, um, everything is temporary. They say in stressful situations, <laughs> not my monkeys, not my circus. Yeah, I can't control what everyone else is doing. I, I'm not controlling this, right? Um, I love Be the Change You Wish to See in the World by Gandhi. If we go into the world and we are the person that we want the world to be, we will help make it different, right? I can do this. I've got this dream, hope, believe, whatever works for you. But practicing them throughout the day and being consistent and trying it for a while, you'll start to feel that your negative self-talk came from somewhere, your mother, your teachers, the, uh, our society, anything. And there's a lot of things that give us all these negative um, emotions and, and stress. So when I was giving birth, I said, I can do this. And the doula nurses and midwife were saying, you are doing this. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Like I can do this. You are doing this. Yeah. I'm here at work today, right? I'm doing this. So they're very powerful. Um, and it's also the story you tell yourself matters. We're told so many things by society. Or we're told so many things by the media. And we really need to feed ourselves these good pieces of nutrition for our brain and for our self-worth. And so by saying every day, you know, I'm going to be as healthy as I can today. Like that's important. I'm going to drink water today. I'm going to fill my body with some positive fuel, right? Those are all things we can say to help us feel in control, more powerful, and to really see our self-worth. So that is affirmations. Now, here we are. This is our last one, five, four, three, two, one grounding technique. And um, I think it's our last one. Yes, it is our, our last one. And I always try to get you out of here a few minutes early to give you time before your next thing. So, but this is a really quick one. So I want you to notice all of your senses, right? So take a deep breath. And with your microphones off, what are five things you can see? My ring light, my mirror. I want you to say them out loud. Ready, go my computer, my cup, my desk, my ring light, my mirror. Feel, pay attention to your body and think of four things you can feel in your body and say them out loud now. The arms of my chair, this comfortable seat, my shoulders are tight, 
and I feel my feet on the floor, right? Now I want you to listen for three sounds. It can be traffic, breathing, phones, babies, voices, dogs. So go ahead and listen and then say out loud three things you hear. I hear the buzz of my computer. I hear a bike going by on the sidewalk and I hear someone in the building talking. And then take a big smell. What are two things you can smell? I smell goldfish crackers and I smell, I really only smell one thing. So if you can't find two things, think of your favorite smells. Mine would be vanilla and chocolate chip cookies. And then taste, say one thing you can taste. It may be toothpaste, soda, water, et cetera. If you can't taste anything, think of your favorite taste. Say that out loud. And then take a deep breath to end. So breathe in. Breathe out. I use this technique so many times as a school counselor. I was a school counselor, sole school counselor for middle and high school students, 800 of them. And a lot of times they'd come in so worked up. And it, a way to get yourself to really get in the folk into present, the present and ground yourself is this five, four, three, two, one grounding technique. So you can do it in your head anytime too. What are five things I see? I could say to myself, student walking, a student riding a bike, a tree, a squirrel, Beaumont Tower, right? What do I feel? So you go through that every single sense, five, four, three, two, one, and it'll help calm you down, ground you to the here and now, and taking those deep breaths really helps. So that's it. We made it to the end. I wanna thank you so much for your participation today in the chat, for taking time to invest in yourself. And I'll say it again, Maya Angelou says, if you don't work, nothing else will. There's nothing more important than your health. I like the opportunity to say, if you haven't scheduled your yearly health appointments, please do. Schedule your dentist, your doctor, schedule it for you and your family. You are worth it. Learn your numbers, know what your body looks and feels like to notice changes and make sure that you always focus on your health. So thank you so much today. And thank you, Allison, for the lovely invitation and come back and speak to this group. Yes, thank you, Jamie. We are so grateful for your time and expertise and experience and vulnerability because you shared a lot of personal stuff. We thank um, the 80 participants that came today. I know that you all are at work and that you're taking an hour and a half out is kind of a big deal. So we appreciate They're worth it though, aren't they, Allison? Yeah, we appreciate you taking the time for yourself. Uh, it'll make you better at your job. And it will hopefully help you in your personal life as well. Uh, Jamie is speaking next month. So she's talking about staff retention at our free webinar in February. So if you really enjoyed this and you really enjoy her, please come back. We are super grateful for the partnership. And with that, I'm going to end the recording. And once again, thank you all for coming. There's a survey that will 